With an hour to go in trading, all eyes are in the stock rally. But, well, there's something even more intriguing happening right now, folks, and it's happening in the bond market. Yields are moving higher, and the yield curve is steepening. Meanwhile, bank stocks looking more compelling as Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan right on the cusp of breaking out through their respective 50-day moving averages. So what's the message from the bond market, and how should it inform the way you invest? Joining me now, the Bonson Group founder, David Bonson. David, you know, this this bond market's been range-bound for some time. Time, but it's making a very intriguing move here, and it seems like it's influencing a lot of things, including bank stocks. It is. We have to keep two things in perspective, Charles. First of all, we're talking about the 10-year breaking out above 70 basis points, okay? So in perspective, we're still in very <laughs> low-yield environment, but that, that shape, that trajectory, the, traje- the direction of the curve is steeper, and that's indicating a more risk-on environment. It is not what people would have expected, particularly with, you know, supposedly Biden looking better in the polls and things like that. You would have expected more flattening in the curve, more pressure on bank stocks. So there's a lot of behavior in the market right now that is contrary to what people's uh, intuition would be, and I think people need to be aware of that. Uh, for the last several years, almost every smart person that comes on the show at one point or another says, buy the financial, buy the banks. And, you know, listen, this year has been tough going for them. Would you look at some of these bigger names like the J.P. Morgans, the Goldman Sachs that look like they could be trying to at least break through a key, uh, a key uh, metric here? You know, it's a, it's an interesting question because my answer is yes, I would be buying JP Morgan and no, I would not be buying most of the rest. In other words, I'm making a call on JP Morgan. I think they stole Bear Stearns. I think they stole Washington Mutual. I think they have a capital markets business that I love and a dividend growth culture that is absolutely impressive. But I don't like the Bank of America's city groups as much because I just think that after the financial crisis, most of the growth engine in those stories were taken away. Yeah. So I like the financials, and I've been yeah. on your show saying that, but I like the fee-based asset managers, your Blackstones, your Apollos. I think you're going to get a ton of M&A when we get into a better recovery mode, and I think these things are not capital intensive, so they just have a lot of leverage embedded in them, tons of dry powder to go invest in opportunities. That's how I play the financials, Charles. Great, uh, uh, precise. That's what we're looking for. Thank you on that, David. Hey, we got a minute to go, but I want to ask you also about the, these headlines, right? We're seeing more COVID-19 cases in places like New York City, uh, which says it will swiftly move to close parts of the economy down again. So, you know, these headlines have moved markets. Should they continue to move them the way they had been? Should investors have these knee-jerk reactions? Well, you know, I I hate to say it, and it certainly is in Fox Business and Charles Payne doing it, but the media is really behind a lot of this. Those headlines say they're shutting down New York, and then you click the story, and it says four blocks or two zip codes. It's very limited parts of select outbreak in certain parts of Queens, certain parts of Brooklyn. The vast majority of New York is opening up more, as you and I know. We've got to leave it there. We'll leave it there, my friend. Thank you very much.